Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I want to take the opportunity to show you how to build a quick and easy financial table that has comparative values across time periods and also a breakdown of both revenue, cost, profit, and a percentage on rows. So essentially what you see in front of us here, starting from a point like this. And even better is what I'm going to go ahead and also show you how to do is leverage the new Timdle view to essentially be able to produce this in only a couple of minutes in a new Power BI model that already has the base pieces available for it. So I want to walk you through a few of those and show you after we do a walkthrough using Timdle view how we can do this in quite literally just a couple of minutes. So let's go ahead, hop into Power BI and get started. Now to start the conversation, I just want to mention that I know that the topic of creating a financial type table, anything that has to do at all with P&L, so profit and loss or anything like that, there are as many different designs as there are companies out there that do financial reporting. But this one really is just to show you a quick and easy way to get from something like this to be able to get to something a bit more meaningful where both on columns and rows, you can have a combination of time period comparisons. In this case, I have current year, prior year, year over year, year over year percentage. And if I click on a single month, it actually changes it to current month, prior month, and a monthly comparison. And then on rows, I have my revenue, expense, profit, and profit percentage. And again, I know there's many other ways to customize this. This one does follow a hierarchical structure. So every category, subcategory will need all of these. But to start with, I will walk you through the pieces of this, but then again, using the Timdle view, I want to show you how easy it is to script and then create this from scratch in a new workbook if you needed to. So to start with, let's see what is comprising this. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of slowly walk through this and then do a quick way of this. So starting from this one here, let's go ahead and create a new page. And this will be our kind of slow start for this one. And what I'm going to do is essentially add in a few components to this. So the first thing that I want to do is I'm actually going to use a field parameter. So I've already built out my field parameter to have a revenue expense, to have revenue expense, profit and profit percentage. Just as a reminder, field parameters can be added from modeling under fields section here. It's basically just a reference of the four measures. So if I bring this and I put this into the value section, it adds this into the visual. And now one thing that you want to do to make sure that it shows on rows rather than columns is we can come in to the properties section here, go to values and just ensure for your matrix table that you have switch values to rows turned on. So normally it would show up as new columns. You flip it into rows. And now the beautiful marriage that we can do together with this is I also have a calculation group. Now those are great for pocket calculations of time periods. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in my calc items and add that to my columns here. And then that brings in current year, prior year, year over year, and percentage. And again, that changes when I select February, March, April, any of these in here. Um, now, the reason it automatically does the two of these, just to show you, is I'm going to go to model view. And I have eight calc items technically in there. But each one of these has logic checks. So for any of the year over year comparative, um, categories of them, it checks to see if there is only one value for the current year, because you need to have some year context to make it work. And there is more than one month value selected. If those are true, it returns the year calculations. And then down for the current month ones, if there is a single value for the month and year, then it returns these values. So there's just a switch check basically built into those. And that is collectively what gives this. So I basically, to create a table like this really fast and easy, and then the last thing that I did in terms of this over here is I did just add some conditional formatting to get a bit of color into the percentages from the format pane. If I come down to specific uh, column uh, below that, if I go to cell elements and I go to my profit percentage, I just have the font color set up where if it's greater than zero, it's green. If it's less than zero, it's red. So positive, negative for that. But this little package combo works really well. Now, before we had Tim to view, we'd have to use third party tools or other stuff to kind of move these things over. So tabular editor, things like that. So this is where I want to show you how quickly and easily I can build this from scratch on this particular visual right here. So if you haven't turned this on yet, this is a new preview feature file. You go to options and settings, 
over to here. And we're going to open this up, go to preview features, Timdle view at the bottom. So this is the thing that came out um, a couple, about a year and a half ago. Um, and it is something that really goes a long way to helping you uh, have readable and writable language against the model. And previously, you needed things like Tabular Editor or other tools to be able to, to use it, Visual Studio Code. Now it's built right into Power BI. And the way to recreate this in this workbook for others is essentially you can just grab the objects from it and it'll create the script for that. So uh, if I wanted to say create my expense, profit, percentage, and revenue off my profit, I can just grab A, B, C. There we are. Drag and drop this over here. That is the script to create them in their entirety. Now that includes the expression, that includes the format string definition, because I have a dynamic format string built into there, any attribute related to this. So that's how I'm able to, to copy and paste this out. So I'm actually now going to, I'm gonna delete all those extra measures that I had. I'm gonna delete my calc group and I'm gonna delete my field parameter because every one of these was dragged and dropped into here to create a script like that, that I have saved down here at the bottom. You can say, you can see my create measures, my create time intelligence and create my field parameter. So let's go ahead and just delete all of these out. And I wanna show you just in within like a couple of minutes, how quickly I can add everything in and put it into the visual. So let's get rid of expense, profit and revenue. We're gonna delete those two. All right, I basically have nothing but my sum of my amount column, which is both my expense and my revenue to lead to my profit. So I'm gonna to go to create measures and I'm gonna select apply. That has created those three measures with also including any of their dynamic formatting. I'm gonna to come to my time intelligence in here. That had a table that is gonna create it creates this. Now there's a little error that needs to be thrown up because they need to be manually refreshed when you add a new one, just like with tabular editor and refresh that. Now here's an important thing to note that it included. It included the hierarchy. I had a calc type, which actually splits up my time intelligence table by either my year over years or my months over months. So this is actually really cool because not only would this work for calc groups or field parameters, this could work for, um, copying over DAX uh, tables that are related uh, to a calendar table or anything else. All of those extra attributes come with this. And then finally, I'm gonna create my field parameter, select apply, refresh to get that in there. And now I have all my items. I can come here, go to this, get rid of my profit. I'm just gonna go into my metrics here, populate that in. I'm gonna go to my time intelligence. I'm gonna add that into my columns. And there we go. Within a minute or so, if this was a different workbook that I wanted to move this stuff over, I could copy and paste this instantly using that new Timbal view. This is just a, a teaser of some of the stuff you can do with it. But for things that you want to transfer between models and PBX files, this has such a broad use case. And the fact that it, you need to grab the script for this, it is a drag and drop method for that. So at a bare minimum, I just want to get you started on the idea of this. And a lot of my demos are now going to have this too because it will be so much easier for you to take my workbook that's available in my blog download section, take the script as you see here that I've saved and move it over to yours. Now, the one caveat is, you know, if your calendar names are a little bit different, you might need to rename them once it gets added in some of the, uh, the actual scripts themselves inside of here. So like in the actual um, measure calculations, let's come to the model. So open up one of these just as an example. So if, if there was a different name that you might need to update, so a little bit of uh, massaging that might need to be done, but it's still gonna save you a lot of time versus having to add these one at a time. So I absolutely love this from a development perspective, easy to copy for you, but also hopefully this is just a nice little useful pattern where you could have a couple of clicks and create a really nice little instant financial table without too much fuss or custom modeling. And again, I know there's a lot more customization we could do to this, but I wanted to show you something that was quick out of the box and could be done just in a couple minutes if you really wanted to, to get a nice little delivery of a mixture of uh, percentage on rows, uh, date period comparisons. Um, but overall, as always, if you have any comments, suggestions, or questions, drop them into the comments down below. Check out some of our related videos here in the upper left. And as always, liking, sharing, and commenting will continue to help the channel grow. And I will see you all in my next video.